before we get going, if everyone could please stand up and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, and I also want to thank, for those of you who come every month, you might notice we have a nice brand new flag as opposed to our old tattered one, looked like it was in a war. Uh, Mike, Mike Kenny donated that. He said he was forced to do it, but I, I think he, could, he chose to do it, so thanks, Mike. A few quick announcements before we get going here. Uh, first one is, we, we want to make everyone aware, if you go to the MBCIA website, uh, not only will you see a schedule of classes, but uh, there's other things on there, job opportunities. There's, there's somewhere where you can buy apparel and uh, the, there's a variety of things on there, from hats and, and uh, button-down shirts, jackets, high-visibility jackets. And you have the option if you want to put either the uh, Massachusetts building official logo on it, or you can put the MBCIA logo on it, either way. Uh, and we don't make any money off of that, so the prices you're paying are truly the prices from the people producing it. So go to the website and you know take advantage of some of that stuff. Maybe get your cities or towns to pay for it. Probably not, but do your best. Uh, all right, we also have some new members to announce, or to vote on. First one is uh, James Wilson. He is local building inspector in Amesbury, and he was sponsored by Sam Joslin. We're gonna do them all together. Next one is Gregory Earls, uh, city of Newburyport building inspector. Sponsored by Glenn Closey. And last one is Dennis Morrill. Hope I said that right. City of Newburyport Building Inspector. Also sponsored by Glenn Closey. So, do I have a motion? Seconded? Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All right, congratulations. Dennis, Gregory, and James, you are officially members of the MBCIA. Make sure you pay your dues. Ken's right out there. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, two more things, then we'll start the presentation. First one is next month's meeting, uh, March's meeting, is going to be at Spinelli's in Linfield, and the topic is spray foam. We have uh, a representative uh, from Isony um, who is going to do the presentation. He did it for us, I want to say, two years ago, maybe three years ago. It's a fantastic presentation. The guy really knows everything there is to know about spray foam. And as you all know, a lot of these products, applications, and rules are changing all the time. So it's a good thing for us to, uh, to get updated on. So that's next month at Spinelli's in Linfield. Uh, and lastly, uh, our, our, pre our presenter today is uh, Cisco Meneses. He's uh, with the National Fire Escape Association, and he does presentations like this all around the country, correct? Uh, my first interaction with, with Cisco was when I worked for the city of Lowell and he came and did a presentation for us. Uh, we were getting a uh, fire escape program getting uh, up and running at the time and he has presented for the city of Lowell a couple times yeah, and has also presented for us here at the MBCA uh, a while ago, probably three or four years ago. So before he gets going, he does want to come up here and he has a presentation to make. Yeah. Then I'm going to let him explain because sure. he'll do a better job than I will. Well, Nelson, you're going to be part of it, but uh, what we wanted to do is bring anybody that is here from Lowell. They didn't know about this unless we told them a day or two ago. But uh, fellas, uh, I'd like to let you guys either have one representation or uh, everybody can come up. But the city of Lowell basically are getting an award today, and they're the model city. Whenever we talk across the country, we always talk about a model city. Uh, that it's not that they knew what they were doing when they first started, but they got it right. They not only uh, took several classes on fire escape awareness, they also created the first, and you have it in, your, in, in the documents that I left, I gave you one or two per uh, packets uh, per table. There's the Lowell confidence test in there, and that's the real big achievement in it. It's not just the awareness of fire escapes. They created, uh, with our assistance, uh, because of this class, a 25-point questionnaire, which I have a 25-point questionnaire, they just copied question by question, which basically is the reason why they're getting this award, because the, they're one of the first cities in all of Massachusetts to basically put fire escapes in the forefront. So, um, 
anybody getting hurt, firemen or tenants, you know, this is one of those cities that is doing something about it because a lot of times things are not recognized until there's somebody dead on the ground, usually a tenant, a fireman and a baby, and then all of a sudden everybody wants to do something about it. But they did it. So I'd like to have one of the representatives, Dave Fuller, maybe come up and uh, receive the award because he didn't know that uh, he was going to come up here. But uh, I'd like a big round of applause. This is the, this is the city you want to talk to. I, I won't take uh, credit for this. Christopher McWhite, who uh, previously worked for the city, worked very diligently to uh, put the uh, language together uh, in order to have uh, code compliancy with fire uh, escape. So, great, great job. Yeah, thank you. Great, great applause. And this is the guy you got to call now to say, how do we, how do we do it? But I gave you in your in your pieces of paper, I gave you a copy of their uh, questionnaire, and I actually give you a blank, and it says your city name here. So all you have to do is copy and paste. They already went through all, all, the, all the information that they needed to go to prove, and they're one of the few cities that have low testing, which is in the code, and we'll cover this, that fire escapes uh, have to be low tested, as well as not just examined. And the reason being is that 75% of a low test, it's a guarantee, is on the structure outside. 25% of it is an inside the structure, which I can't see when we're inspecting. So a lot of times, and again, please visit the table, come and see Rusty. When we take a break an hour from now, come and see Rusty go. That, that actually came off a of school in Cambridge, as is. That's the way it was when the children were using it in a K through 12 school, private school. Um, and then we using this fire escape. It was a four foot wide fire escape. I'll talk about it a little later. Every day, to go to the kindergarten, recess. So, and this is this is what through bolts look like in your city. So the load test is so that this little silver that you see at the end, that's the only thing holding some of your fire escapes up in the air. So a load test is not just for the structural fire escape outside. The load test is that your 50, 75, 100, 125 year old building, this is buried in brick, buried in wood, and this is, uh, uh, I'll speak about this later and I'll show you some cases. I'm an expert witness on a lot of fire escapes. This is what puts tenants and firemen on the ground. Not the whole structure. What's holding the whole structure? It's either a five-eighths bolt or a three-quarter bolt. Okay, so, that, so today's going to be interactive. So, you know, ask a lot of questions because it's not one of these, I'm not going to talk about the history of fire escapes and who built it, who got the invention award on that. It's really a call about, you know, as I go through these, this will trigger questions. So please open up the questions. Let's, let, let me explain. And then if you want to see the history of rust, it's right here. So at the break, come and see, you know, how long it takes to grow this much rust. On average, it takes about 50 years of neglect. You just leave it alone to grow a quarter inch of rust. I got a half inch of rust right here. Okay, so some of these fire escapes that we're dealing with, you only, you only deal with them when they're on the ground, and then everybody's got what happened, what happened. Even the insurance companies are getting into play. I'll show you some examples of the insurance company now are doing the job of what the city's required to do. And just so you know, you're not required to let somebody know that they have to certify their fire escape. They already know they're supposed to certify their fire escape. So don't take blame. When somebody says, you didn't tell me, that's just neglect. Every building in the U.S. has to have two means of egress certified at all times. It's, it's on the owner to know this, not on you guys. Remind them with a little tap on the head. If you had to do that, Ed, then you guys would be out just telling people what to do who own property. Doesn't make any sense. So let's. Um, just, just, let's yes. I, I just want to move the speaker before you start sure. the show. Have one of the guys. Have yeah, Frank, can you help me? All right. So as they uh, we move one of these speakers, let me um, let me move on to the the next piece. So again, my name is Cisco Manessis. My dad's 84. He owns uh, Manessis Iron Works on Prospect Street in Cambridge. Been there since 71. I've been there since 71 too because he, he needed a, a cheap helper. So I've been in this business, I'm 61, since 71. Son of a shoemaker. No shoes. So that's how long I've been in the business. I so I also teach this fire escape awareness class for, for continuing education, no, six hours. I've taught it all over the nation. I've taught from Maine to Florida, 
Chicago to Texas, Seattle to San Diego. If you want to go, just go on, on the book. It says uh, nationalfireescapeassociation.org. Every uh, class that I've taught is up there and free. You don't have to register, you have to do it. Just get on there, watch a class, watch a previous class of this type of class. But you'll, you'll see that I did teach in Seattle, I did teach in Los Angeles, I did teach you know, in Boston, I've taught some BOA. You, all your associations I've taught the same, the same uh, class on average three to five times over the past 15 years, okay? So it doesn't mean that uh, you know, you're gonna get this, it doesn't mean you're gonna run home now and start this fire escape program, but um, it's, it's, a, it's copy and paste, it's ready. The city's there ready for you guys to uh, just copy. And Lowell's, Lowell's the example, just call them and say, how long did it take for you to implement? What's your steps? I'll cover all kinds of information here, but this, let's go back to Boston and what happened. You guys may remember this from 72. Some people say 72, some people say 75, but what's important here is look at what happened. This is on Marlboro Street. That fireman who's still alive, I think they celebrated 40 years on this, if I'm not mistaken, recently. But sadly, the girl, the woman next to him died. The little girl, which I believe was a niece, she fell and, and this won a Pulitzer Prize for the photograph, because the, the, the Herald reporter, he was basically just um, taking photographs, he had a motorized camera, and at the last second he just stepped away and, and she, she had all that steel, look at all the steel following her. That fireman grabbed the, the hook and ladder with his hand, he saved himself. Okay, so this is what took the IBC, which says you must maintain your fire escape at all times. Boston said, we're gonna change the code to say it every five years. So they were leaders at that time, you know what I'm saying? To basically mandate that everything gets done. But relying on owners. You didn't have a bell go off every five years for these people. in front of the screen, you gotta move it. Yeah. Oh, just put it on the ground, put the speaker on the ground. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. So, with that being said, the, uh, that code, which was, which was uh, very useful, uh, it kind of went out of favor because, again, it relied on the owner to watch it, watch it, guys. Come, come close. We do some of our best work last minute. All right, so with that being said, you guys in Boston started this, but again, it relies on the owner to be compliant. There's no bells or anything going off. So in all the other cities nationwide, in all the other cities in Massachusetts, it's the same thing. There's no bell that goes off for anybody. You know what I'm saying? That everybody has certain requirements in their city that they, uh, with, when they own a piece of building, and then they, what they do is they, they basically rely on the owner to be good. Well, when it comes to fire escapes, not everybody's good. Yes? Um, when you have a rental property, you gotta get an occupancy permit. Right, so they know that. Why, why isn't that put there when they come to look at the job? Yeah. Make sure that that's on. You get your smoke detector signed off, tie it there. Uh, occupancy permits, tie it there. Pulling permits, tie it there, either at the beginning or at the end. You must have a permit. You, uh, at one time, Boston was uh, had a sign off at the end, meaning to close your permit, you needed a fire escape affidavit. I haven't heard that in a while. You know what I'm saying, somebody calling, and say, hi, I need my fire escape inspector because I'm trying to close a permit. But that was something that they did uh, from a previous uh, occurrence. So let's, let's move on and, uh, and see what we have to talk. So that's the shot that won the Pulitzer Prize, and sadly she did pass away. And a lot of times code is changed or code is reinforced from a death of a, some, a tenant or death of a fireman. You guys remember the station night fire? Okay. That was many years ago, and I got approached by Hank Philippi Ryan. There you go, add some additional look. I got approached by Hank Philippi Ryan, and she said, I want to do a story on fire escapes. I said, great. She goes, uh, how many uh, fire escapes um, in, do you inspect on average that pass? I said, anywhere from 15 to 25% of the fire escapes I inspect pass. She goes, it's impossible, you know, we have a code here that says, five years and such, I said, yeah. So what I did is I, I went with her, and she filled me around uh, you know, various cities, including Boston, but then she said, okay, I'm gonna go by myself and stop looking at other cities. And she went all the way out to Springfield, she went to a bunch of different places to say, what's going on in the rest of the cities? We have an article uh, in the Boston Globe that you may or may, or may not have read, and it says out of the 9,000 fire escapes in Boston, 
3,000 are voluntarily certifying themselves. Okay? But just not Boston. Every other city here that has a downtown, whether you have 1,000 fire escapes or 500 fire escapes, about a third of your people are compliant. Two thirds are waiting for that bell to ring, or you giving them a violation, or you, you asking for that certificate by some form of trigger. So let's see what she had to say, and hopefully it'll be loud enough. 